What is up guys, your boy Ren here today and I have another fantastic deck. Before I'm going to talk about the deck, let's not forget to subscribe to the channel because we're so close to 700. And yes, <laughs> I still have my finger because I destroyed it yesterday. Never mind, so this is going to be a Gengar Mimikyu deck that, well, we kind of all know and we all love and hate. Well, that is a log deck, but... I was thinking, is this deck really good in the current format? How to, you know, push this deck to its limits for the current form of the current state of standard, right? After, you know, uh, Cosmic Eclipse being released. And that is my take on that deck. That's my take on, you know, Gengar Mimikyu in the current format. And, you know, today on stream, we're going to have a lot of Pokemon, like a whole stream only TCG, where we're going to come up with many decks for years to come. So, first things first. Let's go with, of course, three Omastars, right? The Fossil Bind Omastars. And still, there's a lot of people that are working with items. So definitely, that is a really, really, really good addition to the deck. With, of course, three Gengar Mimikyus with the Horror House GX. Because I know sometimes, well, some of the guys will not work, right? Because, you know, they might not have items. You know, you might do something wrong. It happens, right? But Horror House GX... Fantastic move, especially if you go second. I really highly recommend go using that move because, well, you can just cut off your opponent, and this allows you to dunk him during your next turn, right? So, definitely interesting attack. Definitely one of those attacks you will use. If not, you know, during your first turn, if you go second, then during your second turn, definitely with two energies on the board. Then we have 46 trainer cards. It's insane. I know, I know, I know. But, well, we're gonna go into control mode with this deck, so definitely three acro bikes to dig what we need. But the control aspect is going to be a card that I know I hate personally, but well, it's in standard format, so we can use it. Chip Chip Ice Axe, right? So we look at the top three cards of our opponent's deck, we choose one and we put it on uh, the top of their deck, and they do shuffle rest, or they put them at the bottom, um, shuffle end card and back into their deck. Yeah, they do shuffle them. So you can actually control what they're gonna draw and you kind of want them to draw items when you have Omastar so they are locked. On top of that we have four Crushing Ammas which are really good. Of course, you know, coin flips, well, you know, I'm not the master of coin flips but this is definitely you know, another layer of control, right? Getting rid of your opponent's energy. For a Malamar matchup, <coughs> that's not really you know, what you want to do, but for the rest of the matchups, definitely, right? So definitely a really, really, really nice card for the deck. Of course, as you know me, full custom catchers. I tried this deck with great catchers, but I just feel like custom catchers are a lot better because you have access to them almost at all time. You have a lot of cards in your hand, and you know you can just snipe that baby cards, not only GXs. On top of that, we have four mysterious treasures, one peeking red card to say what your opponent has and maybe you know refresh their hand. Four Poké Gears 3.0, three Pokémon communications, two Poké Navs. Look at the top three cards of your deck and reveal Pokémon or energy. This is, you know, mainly for the energy, and of course, you put other cards in the order, so, you know, you know exactly what you're gonna draw. Three rare candies for the Omastar, of course, four, a full playset of surprise box to give items to your opponent's hand, two switches, three unidentified fossils, and something that will work against Caldeo, because Caldeo was, like, my main problem, three power plants on the board, definitely, with four green explorations and eight psychic-type energies. So let's go, let's play this deck, right? I called it Grichio, because uh, that was the person that requested the deck, to be quite honest, to update it to the current state of the format. And, you know, don't forget that the whole deck is, of course, down there below, look down there, in the description, so you can go copy and paste it right now, you can check it out yourself, and I highly recommend that, also 5% discount right there in the description. So, do you want to go first or you want to go second? Honestly, it doesn't matter that much. I do like to go first because during my second turn, I actually have Omastar, right? Which is really nice. But Horror House GX kind of buys you the turn for the Omastar. So, definitely also is uh, something that you don't really have to worry about, you know, going first or second. But as you see, like, I went, I went first. We're both doing mulligans, all right, you know, so this is time for coffee. Let's see if the coffee is good. There we go. Okay, another mulligan. Of course, there is... Okay, um... 
we're gonna have few mulligans definitely and mulligans are fine with this deck you want your opponent to have like you know, a lot of stuff in their hand because you're gonna use that against them so i don't know what i'm facing honestly i am like i don't know honestly don't know what am i facing so that is really interesting okay so oh, okay that's miss magus so definitely energy goes on the Gengar and we're gonna use Pokinav. So this is me preparing my next turn and to be quite honest, you know, um, Greens is going to be on, uh, on top of the deck, definitely for me. Because I have the second energy in my hand. Um, Surprise Box or Acrobike, I don't think, he might actually play some items but I know I'm gonna be using GX so Acrobike we can go and dig for something and then Surprise Box. Should I go with Power Plan right now? I honestly don't know. It's a Muta deck, it's Miss Magus, it might, but the fighting type energy, that's kind of what put me off. I'm not sure I'm gonna press done. Yeah, let's go with done. Maybe I should have went with Power Plan, but I'm just, you know, not sure if that's like, you know, the, what I should do. And look at that. There we go, so I was kind of right in terms of not playing Power Plan, yet I did thought, honestly, I did thought he's gonna do something, he did nothing, so because I want to, first things first, I have a Kanda in my hand, so I can go Unidentified Fossil, um, I know I can browse through the deck right now, but I do know I have a Knockout, so there's no need for me to browse through the deck, because I know I have a Knockout to some degree, it just depends on, 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 on what he has in his hand. So that's why I'm choosing picking red card, because that was the card I wanted to play. And I know, like, I should browse through my deck, but in a situation like that, okay, so there's nothing. Which means, well... I don't know right now what he has. Let's play that power plant, and I can try to knock it out. I mean... We can do two things, I try to knock it out, or I can just play Horror House. And I'm gonna be a little bit cocky, and I'm gonna go and play Poltergeist. Hopefully you got one, we got two, that's a GG. There we go. That's a GG, and that's like the reason why I didn't look through the deck. Um, Cause I knew we gonna have a win, right? I knew, whoa, that's loud on my in my ears, no, 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 that's loud, almost blew my ears, so my ear, eardrums, mate. Alright. So that was a game number one, let's go, let's play a game number two. And of course, you know, situations like that, you know, that was a huge risk on my side, because he had a ton of energy and that game could have ended up quite bad for me. So, but sometimes, you know, when you have a situation like that, it's good to risk. It's honestly good to risk. Like, I knew, I, I kind of knew he doesn't have anything to threat, uh, threaten me. Um, it was just good to risk. And we came out victorious. Of course, you know, if you were scared to risk, you've always, you always uh, could have, you know, actually played uh, the Horror House GX, which will you know, stop him, right? Because he can't, can't play anything from his hand and then attack, right? But I don't think that was, you know, that was necessary here. So, ooh, Rayquaza. So he's gonna, yeah, that's gonna be a super early going for all the pieces. Eight, wait, what? ADP with Rick? Oh. By the way, I'm sorry, but someone should change, like, the dragon type full art. It, it looks bad. It's, it's like, uh, it's like puke green. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't say that, but it really does look like that. Like, please change that on full arts. Because in regular card, good. So because he's playing Rayquaza. I know I'm playing Power Plant right now. Well, I remember it's not even necessary. I mean, huh. Yeah, I'm gonna drop that Power Plant. We got a Kende. Caldeo is there. Okay, so he has Caldeo. Let's start with Pokinaf. I might draw the energy. No energy. Oh, without energy, that's okay. I mean, Pokegear is like the best choice that I have, to be quite honest. So let's see his hand. 
Yeah, let's just do that. And I'm going to drop that power plant. I want to drop that power plant because he didn't do anything with both Rayquaza. So in case he has another Rayquaza, I just want to drop that power plant. <coughs> Definitely, you know, Pokegear for next turn allows me to get myself an unidentified fossil, right? So this is a better choice than actually getting it. And... Well, it's going to allow me to browse through my deck, see what, there, what I have there, how much energy, how many energy there is, what is left, what's not left, Cynthia, okay. So I do think the pink red card was quite okay, like he, oh, okay. He just drew the perfect Cynthia, oh man. Stealthy Hood, Cherish Ball, for Caldeo, Pure Heart. And the GX. Oh, this is not looking good. This is not looking good. We missed. And if I'm going to miss green, that's a game. And that is a game. That is unfortunately a game. We missed green and... I mean, it happens, right? It happens sometimes. Let's go play a game number three. There was not even point of looking through the deck. He had all the pieces he wanted. He had the board. And you know, if you're not going to be able to get the energy or do anything by turn three with this deck this is not you know this is not a good and you have to go and approach the game number two unfortunately right or in this case game number three so let's go we've won the coin flip so of course i am going first this time and i'm assuming this hand is going to be a lot better and it kind of is all right so we have unidentified fossil all right that I can play, which is fine. Oh, and the mulligans. So I'm going to draw some cards as well. Surprise box, you know, switch. Priplup, okay. So that's, that's definitely an Empoleon deck. Mm. An Omastar. Omastar Custom Catcher. So, first things first, Unidentified Fossil. I don't really need a switch right now. So what I'm going to use uh, Mr. Treasure for, even though I'm not going to go for anything to be... Quite honest, I'm gonna go for uh, Gigami Miki just to thin out a deck, but I'm gonna go and browse through the whole deck. So, one of the stars is in the hand, okay. Three catchers, one is here, okay. Those are okay. There we go, one catcher, one, we use that. All Poke Gears, Pokemon Communication is missing, so there's one less Pokemon Communication. Poke enough in my hand. Uh, I play three candies, okay. So, we got Communication, we've got Surprise Box, we've got Two power plants, that's four, and two energies. So those are the price cards. Two energies, two power plants, uh, Pokemon communication, and, 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 I'm, and Miss Surprise Box. So those are, uh, those are our price cards. So we know that, right? So thanks to that, we, I can actually start doing something. And oh boy, maybe I can't. Wait. Mm. I want to look at my hand for a second, so I can risk for the Poke Gear, or I can just draw a Kende and I want to risk a little bit. I am a risk taker sometimes, and I do want to risk. Let's use a Chip Chip Ice Axe. That is interesting. That is really interesting. And you know what? I'm yeah. I'm gonna give him a switch because Martial Arts Dojo. He can use it already, you know, as uh, he's gonna be there, so yeah. I don't wanna use, I don't wanna play that. Done. Because the thing is, even though we have a resistance, I don't wanna give him, you know, options. I don't wanna give him, you know, more things or increase his attack. Okay, he had a dojo in his hand, you know. I couldn't know, I couldn't possibly knew that. So, you know, this isn't one of those things. Well, okay, he has it, but I still have resistance, so that's good. That's working for me. I know I'm drawing Pokegear next turn. Green's exploration and we are going. We are going to be on fire. <laughs> of course he has to know, like he has to respect the fact that we might lock him, right? Pokemon communication, right, let's see what he's gonna go for. Oh, there goes Buzzwall, back to the deck, and Piplup. So by putting Piplup back to his deck with Chip Chip Ice Axe, 
I kind of told him, like, hey, you have to use another Pokemon communication. He had to use Pokemon communication for that. And I have surprise bugs, so if, you know, if something happens, I can put the item back. And of course, there's a resistance, right? So we're all good. <sighs> okay, you know what they say, let's go Pokegear 3.0, and it's... Okay. <sighs> right, so this is the mode where I know I'm going to change my strategy, and I don't like that, but I have to change something. So, I just want to draw two cards from... Uh, let's give him a roller skater, it's fine. Uh, I just want to draw two cards with Custom Catcher. Okay, and that was, actually that was a good draw, even though I can't actually use Fossil Bind the way I want to, but at least we have it. That's another Custom Catcher, another draw of three. That was, you know, that was a risk that uh, I, I just had to take, and we got a Green's Exploration, but I can't use it right now, and that is the biggest problem. Now we have, okay, at least I've thinned out a deck, so you know what, because it's a card that I can't use, I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm just gonna discard it. Six energy, right, yeah, six energy, no power plants, nada, nothing, okay. So again, one Pokemon communication, one... Uh, one, 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 surprise box, two energies, two power plants, okay. Uh, he's also thinking, like, you, you can feel that, you can feel the thinking, you can sink that in, and, well, we are not in the best spot, uh, that's what I can tell you. I'm counting on energy, and this is not, you know, not, not, not a pretty place to be. With two energies in a you know in a price in price card, this is woof. This is not good, but at least he doesn't have the turns that he wants as well. But my problem is I need two energies to fully utilize a horror house GX. So the question is Do I go and pass the turn or not? So I can use the horror house, but then I will not be able to draw, or I can just give myself a turn to maybe draw the energy, right? And, you know, he's not dealing a lot of damage to me right now. I think it's we are okay passing the turn, right? If this turn I'm not going to, you know, get the energy, depending on the board state, I'm going to use the GX or not to buy myself a turn. Because I know he his hand is getting bigger, right? Like, he can actually get rid of stuff, it's fine. Like, for me, you know, it's really good that he's drawing more and more, right? Because it's really good for me. Like, it works for my strategy, it works for Poltergeist. Wait, with all those cards, he doesn't have anything. Okay, he's just charging Basil, all right. Pokegear, that is, oh... One more turn. One more turn. Like, this is just me. Honestly, this is me assuming he has nothing. <laughs> and he has no way of knocking me out. Because I know once I'm going to start knocking out, I might draw that energy from price cards and I can start fueling my benched one, right? And, you know, but judging by the fact how slow he plays, you know, how his attacks are looking, or how his side of the board is looking, I can be quite confident here, right, with, you know, passing the turn like that, and be like, alright, let's wait for the energy. Alright, he's gonna bring back support, and that is probably Roller Skater, and it is. Okay, why people, you know, play a lot of Roller Skater, that's, you know, interesting. I mean, you know, it works with, you know, like, when you discard the energy. Like, I can understand that, because it draws two more cards, that's a draw four, which is quite cool. All right, this is a tough spot, and we've got a power plant. Done. I'm gonna give myself one more turn. We got rid of, you know, Martial Arts Dojo, he discarded one as well. So right now his attacks are doing nothing. But I know there's a water type. There's an Empoleon somewhere, waiting. 
<laughs> right, there's some Poland. So we're gonna send in Poland attacking. And I do think we might see a bubble hold. I don't think it's gonna go direct dive. I think bubble hold. Because I will not be able to attack. So that was this one turn. This one turn that I should have. Yep, that's a bubble hold. This one turn where I should have actually now. Use the GX. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I went too confident. Like, you know. Yeah, I did went a little bit too confident in this game. and Or in this, you know, in, in this turn. Or during this turn. And I'm getting punished for it, you know. Alright, come on. Surprise box. <sighs> I whiffed one turn and I'm just you know, paying for it like really hard. I mean, I have to charge him on the bench and then do something from that. Which is a problem. It, it really is. It is a problem for me. Because I'm either going to have, you know, the energy before I'm going to put him as an active and attack or that's a GG. And it might be, it, it might be GG. It might be slowly coming to an end. Which I don't really like. I don't really like. You know, so I played Unidentified Fossil just to, you know, stall the game one more turn. Like, every single turn I need energy right now. And I have Green's Exploration, so there is a slight, you know, chance of something, or it's there's not. <sighs> so I know I can't draw energy. I'm mean, done, you know, to acrobite, like this is my, you know, my best option at this point. Maybe, you know, acrobite to Pokinav. So we'll see, you know, is there energy somewhere? There is not, there is a Chip Chip Ice Axe. Not really. Pokinav. There is not. There is just not, not, we do not have it, we do not have it, we do not have it, that's a game. That is a game for my opponent. GG my friend, GG. There was nothing. Maybe if I would have had energy this turn, there was nothing. So, Omastar Ginkui deck in the current format. Really no, still interesting deck. But it definitely fell flat. Like, it feels, you know, not as good as it was due to many new cards like Empoleon, as you saw right now, or many counters to the GX's cards. I think this is you know, more of a deck that you can take to the league and take someone by surprise. If your league, you know, is like uh, in, in Europe and, you know, you don't really have like a hyper competitive one, you know, and people are like super nice, then yeah, sure. But. Outside of that, well, this is going to be a really, really tough cookie to go through so many currently, you know, good variants, especially ADP, right, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be really, really tough. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like that. I'm going to create a ton of deck today on stream, so you don't want to miss that. Like, after you watch this, you know, just go live. It's Raven Cold Snatchku. That is where the magic happens, where all decks are being built alive. No copying anyone, not doing anything, just you gave me idea and I am building around it. With, you know, with some help of you guys, of course. Thank you guys so much for watching, goodbye, and good night. Raven loves you, bye. Uh. <laughs>